guys, it's hey. Barb and Robin from Halfway to Sane. <laughs> Hello. Where we're going to do true crime all the time. Oh, she's a poet and doesn't even know it. I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, let's start off by saying thank you for visiting our channel. Mm -hmm. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Hit that thumbs up. That helps us out a lot and make a comment. Today's video is going to be about a young lady named Kristen Smart. And this is, it, it's all about her. She was born February 20th, 1977 in West Germany. Her parents are Stan and Denise Smart, who were both teachers to children of American military personnel. And she had one brother and one sister. When Kristen was a child, she moved with her family to Stockton, California, and she attended and graduated from Lincoln High School in 1995. Kristen enrolled at California Polytechnic State University in 1996. On the night of May 25th, which fell on Memorial Day weekend, she attended a birthday party where she didn't know anyone at a fraternity house. Her friend did not want to attend the party, so she just dropped her off. So Kristen was at the party by herself. At approximately 2 a.m., Kristen was found passed out on a neighbor's lawn by two fellow students, Cheryl Anderson and Tim Davis. You good there? Yeah, my arm just didn't want to cooperate. And we'll tell it to behave. <laughs> They helped Kristen to her feet and decided to walk her back to her nearby dorm. Another student from the party, sorry, camera issues, Paul Flores joined their group and offered to help the two return Kristen to her dorm. Tim Davis departed the group first since he lived off campus and he had to drive to the party, so he had to drive home. Cheryl Anderson was the second to depart the group, heading to Sierra Madre Hall, and she told Paul Flores, who lived closer to Kristen's dorm, that he could walk her there. Paul stated to the police that he walked Kristen as far as his dorm, Santa Lucia Hall, and then allowed her to walk back to her Muir Hall dorm by herself. This was the last known sighting of her. Kristen did not have any money or credit cards at the time she went missing. So there was no way to track her. The university police department originally suspected that Kristen had gone on an unannounced vacation as was common above, among students over the holidays and as a result were slow in reporting her as missing person to local law enforcement. She was only reported missing after a week despite her family's calling the police earlier. So had they done something earlier, possibly, yeah. possibly, possibly she could have been found, but. So several volunteers searched for Kristen. Some were riding horses, some used ground penetrating radar devices. Yeah. During the Lacey Peterson murder, I don't know if any of you guys remember that, the, there were unfounded rumors in the media that Lacey's husband, Scott Peterson, had something to do with Kristen's disappearance due to their simultaneous attendance at the Cal Poly campus. There was only a brief initial inquiry to whether Scott Peterson was tied to the disappearance with Scott saying, with Scott denying any involvement and he was a eventually ruled out as a subject by police. So, although her body was never recovered, an earring that might have belonged to Kristen was found by a tenant at the former resident of Paul Flores' mother. I don't know how you could determine if an earring many, many years later could be tied to her or not. That I don't understand. Unless there was DNA on it. And what's the chances of there be DNA on, a, on an earring? I would think zero. That's well, my opinion. It's according to if the earring was ripped out or... Right. <clears throat> this earring was not marked as evidence and has since been lost by the police. Good job, police. Between 1996 and 2007, various searches for her 
remains and other evidence were conducted, some using cadaver dogs trained to detect the scent of human remains, <clears throat> including searches of properties owned by the Flores family, and no useful leads were found <clears throat> for any for nearly two decades. Which is a shame, that's a long time. Oh yeah. On September 6, 2016, officials from the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office announced they were investigating a new lead in the case. Cadaver dogs from the FBI were brought in and investigators were preparing to spend approximately four days excavating an area on the Cal Poly campus. That's just a long time. Like, what do you think? I, I guess it's possible for cadaver dogs to find something yeah, that many yeah. years later. But if they didn't find the evidence the first time around, what makes you think how many years later they're going to? But my opinion, but after three days, items were found at all three dig sites located at the same hillside near Kristen's dorm. A spokesman for the sheriff's office said the items are being analyzed to see whether they are connected to the case, which could take days, weeks, or months. And the items uncovered are still being investigated as of 2020. And I don't think since then that they have um, announced what those items are. On April 20th, 2021, it was announced by the prosecutor that they believed Kristen's body had been buried beneath the deck of Ruben Flores' home, but had recently been removed. So he would have removed her body that many years later and taken her to a different site. It wouldn't have been a body he removed. Well, that's true. It would have just been bones, but right. what's to say he would have gathered every single bone mm -hmm. that was beneath that dirt? Um, but it, Biological evidence was found by using ground penetrating radar and cadaver dogs. Kristen Smart was declared legally dead on May 25, 20, 2002, the sixth anniversary of her disappearance. In 2005, her parents, Denise and Stan Smart, filed a civil case of wrongful death against Ruben Flores, one of the three students who walked Kristen to her dorm. He was the last one that walked her. The Smart family was represented by James R. Murphy on a pro bono basis and the suit that was dropped due to or the suit was dropped due to the lack of evidence after Flores had pled the Fifth Amendment. Why would it be dropped? Why wouldn't they just um, side with the family? I don't know. Since he pleaded the Fifth, usually when you plead the Fifth, you're guilty of something. Yeah, and you have something to hide. Right. That's how I look so, at it anyway. Yeah, that's how I look at it too. So I would have just yeah, leave with your, the family. Leave and... your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Right? Yeah. In 2006 or 2007, the Flores family filed a lawsuit against the Smart family for emotional distress, but the lawsuit never resulted in a judgment. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office regularly reviewed the case and spent thousands of hours and thousands of dollars during the period of 2011 to 2016. The FBI have her on file as a high priority missing person investigation with a reward up to $75,000 for information leading to finding her or resolving her case. Terry Black, a Delta area man, offered an additional $100,000 reward for Kristen's body. Beginning September 30th, 2019, musician Chris Lambert released a series of 10 podcast episodes. The podcast recounts in detail Kristen's probable abduction and subsequent death at the hands of another student on campus. The podcast has been downloaded over 12 million times. Renewed public interest led to a new billboard being put up in Arroyo, Arroyo Grand in January 2020 to replace the original billboard, which had been up since 1997. 
On January 29, 2020, the San Luis Obispo Police Department confirmed that two trucks owned by Flores had been taken in as evidence. On February 5, 2020, search warrants were served for specific items of evidence at four different locations, two in San Luis Obispo, one in Washington State, and at a home in Los Angeles County. Flores was briefly detained during the search. On April 22, 2020, the Los Angeles Times reported that a search warrant was served at the home of Paul Evans in San Pedro, California. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department assisted detectives from San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Department in the search. It was reported that numerous items of interest were found during the search. Among the items found in the search were date rape drugs and homemade videos showing Flores doing this to young women. On February 11th, 2021, KSBY reported that Paul Flores had been arrested by the Los Angeles Police Department in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, on suspicion of being a felon in possession of a firearm, which is a, which is a felony, which is a felony. On March 15, 2021, a search warrant was issued to search Ruben Flores' home, including the use of cadaver dogs and ground-penetrating radar. An older model Volkswagen was towed from the home of Ruben Flores after cadaver dogs searched the vehicle. So possibly he was using that vehicle at the time of her disappearance. On April 13, 2021, Paul Flores and his father, Ruben Flores, were taken into custody by the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Department. In relation to the case, Paul Flores was charged with murder. Ruben Flores was charged with being an accessory. Investigators later concluded that Paul Flores attempted to rape Kristen, although Dan Dow, district attorney, has stated that the statute of limitations has expired on SA charges. There should be no statute of limitations on that. I don't care. I Yeah. But murder committed in the course of rape or attempted rape justified first degree felony murder charges. In September 21, a judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence of guilt for the case to proceed to trial. The tri trial was set to begin on April 25th, 2022, but was delayed as change of venue. <clears throat> that motion was by the defense and it was granted on March 30th. The case was moved to Monterey County where it is being heard by Judge Jennifer O'Keefe. Pre-trial motions were heard on June 6th and 7th of 2022, which just passed because it's today's July 8th, with some ruled upon and other rulings deferred. Over 1,500 jury summons were sent to county residents. That's a lot. Jury selection began on June 13th, and opening arguments are scheduled to begin on July 6th. That was two days ago. The original June 6th and 7th was a month ago. I just figured out what I said. And the trial is expected to last until October. So this is a trial that we're going to do our best to follow and keep you guys updated. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. That helps us a great deal. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye.